Hello people, today I'm doing an oil change on the Ford Ranger 3.2 turbo diesel engine. These are the same engines that are in the Mazda BT50s. Now it is a cartridge type filter and you will get a new O-ring when you purchase the filter. Starting underneath the engine you want to remove the bolts that secure this sump guard in place. You may have an aftermarket sump guard and it'll be a little bit more heavy duty than this, but the sump guard will need to be removed just to get access to the sump and to be able to have the room to drain out the oil. With this guard removed, it's now much clearer to actually access and see the sump. This will be the first glimpse of it here, and you can see that the sump plug is on the right hand side of our sump. Now to access the filter housing, I choose to go under the left hand side wheel arch. However, you can reach down from the top of the engine bay. If you're doing it through under the wheel arch like this, you will need to remove three of the scrivets that secure this rubber splash guard in place. With these scrivets removed, you'll be able to fold down the rubber splash guard and get access to the oil filter through here. Now it's critically important to remember that this whole oil change process for this particular type of engine needs to be done in around about 10 to 15 minutes. This is due to the design of the oil pump. If the sump is left to drain and the oil filter housing is left open for longer than this, the pump can drain out and it will fail to self prime once the engine starts back up, causing no oil pressure. So we need to be pretty quick about it. I suggest you make sure you have all your tools ready to go. The top of this housing comes off quite easily. However, it will leak some oil as you remove it. So make sure you have a catch pan ready to just to catch that oil as it drips out. As the housing lid is removed, the filter will be contained within the lid. It's just a matter of pulling that filter out. Now we want to remove the old O-ring that is around the filter housing. Make sure you have a pick or a small screwdriver ready to do this. Again, we're needing to do this whole oil change process in under 10 to 15 minutes. The new O-ring needs to be installed. It's just a simple matter of slipping it into that correct groove. Make sure it is lined up in that correct groove and can't jump back out. The new filter is just pressed in over that section in the filter cap housing. It just sits in there nicely. There's no obvious clips or anything to hold it in there. And I would suggest putting a bit of fresh oil on that seal so that as you wind that back in, it doesn't get bound up and damage that seal at all. Now it's a matter of returning the housing lid with the new filter and the new O-ring installed back into the housing. This is just a simple matter of winding it back in. The torque settings are printed on top of the filter housing, so you can torque that up to the correct specifications there. Now hopping underneath the vehicle, we need to access the sump plug. You'll need either a 13mm spanner or a 13mm socket to do this make sure that you have a drip pan ready to go. At this stage, we're probably about two to three minutes into that 10 to 15 minute time frame. So things have happened fairly quickly. Remember, you do not want this to last longer than 10 or 15 minutes. Now with the oil draining, it can give you the opportunity to take the sump bolt and replace the rubber O-ring that's in behind it and make sure that it's in good condition before you return it. Now I let mine drain here for around about a minute and a half, maybe two minutes. There's still a little bit left and if it was any other type of engine I'll just let it sit for another five minutes. But I'm going to put the sump plug back in. Yes, there is a small amount of old oil in there, but it's not going to cause any real issues as we're putting a whole lot of fresh oil in on top of that. Make sure the sump plug is secured back up. Again, check your torque specs there to make sure that it's at the right torque. Now jumping back up on top of the engine here, we want to start replenishing the oil. I suggest a nice big funnel because it is a very small opening on these engines. And I have 9 litres of oil ready to go. The refill capacity is stated at around about 9.8. But remember there is always a little bit of oil in the engine. So putting in 9 litres is a very good place to start. Once the oil's put in, we can put the oil cap on and we want to start this engine up. To complete the process now, you will need to start the engine up. It's been about seven or eight minutes since we started the process, so I'm not expecting any problems at all. 
Once the engine is started up, I suggest that you check the filter housing for any leaks and also check the sump and underneath for any potential leaks as well. After the engine has been running for a few minutes, you need to turn the engine off and do an actual oil check. Because I put a little bit over 9 litres in and I know that the sump capacity is around about 9.5 litres, I knew that I'd be pretty close to a full sump, but it's important to check it anyway with the dipstick. Now this has a cross hatch design on the dipstick and you want to see it in the upper portion of that cross hatched area. You can see here that the oil sits into that cross hatch section and makes it quite dark and black. This oil level is pretty well spot on, so I'm quite happy with that. Hey now, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, give it the thumbs up and leave any comments that you'd like. Thanks for watching.